हेलो गुड इवनिंग नमस्कार नमस्ते फ्रेंडली Before I go ahead, next slide, please. Before I go ahead, I would like to introduce my team members, my salesperson. So I'll start with salesman of the year, Kushal, 2011. Salesman of the year, Joshua, 2012. Salesman of the year, Rishav, 2013. Salesman of the year, uh, Andrew, 2014. He's not over here. I don't know he's pitching his voice somewhere else in New Zealand. And finally salesman of the year 2015 still to be decided. So, I'll go ahead. So the purpose of this presentation is to sell sustainable ideas to you that's QDF. And how we go about this presentation is I'll start with the background of our previous clients, big enterprises, Interface and IKEA. Then Kushal will tell uh, will compare the ideas of interface and IKEA. Moving on, we'll do a swot for you. That's QDF, and uh, we'll come up with some solution that will be done by Rishab, and someone will do the recommendation. That's a suspense. So moving on to the background of interface interface our previous clients. So they started in 1973. Uh, it was started it began in 1973 by ray c anderson and uh, it wants to be known by its deeds not bad deeds good deeds and yes to be known for its deed it has to do something so they have come up with mission zero and to achieve that someone like from our team of united nations they had pitched somewhere in 1990s and they have come up with achieving mission zero and uh, it has been developed on the seven fronts that eliminating waste benign emission that is reducing the toxic emission renewable energy using renewable energy like solar energy wind energy and close the loop that is reusing the resources as an input which you have developed resource efficient transportation you know their employees are lucky 58 days in an year they can work from home and that is how they are reducing the carbon em emission sensitized stakeholders they have sensitized many stakeholders uh, to encourage green using green uh, products green resources and uh, then comes re redesigning commerce they have just redesigned the commerce by coming up an, with a new business model that's that focuses on sustainability only not on service but how you prepare your products in a sustainable way so that's it from interface and yes they have achieved good result you can go on their website and see they have not mentioned dani next it's ikea it started in 1943 by this guy i cannot pronounce his name properly moving on the first organization uh, oh it is the first organization just i thought this is something which differentiated ikea from other companies it started children's ikea <laughs> children's furniture in 1990 sometime and now it's a really good company it has accomplished projects such as helping 500 villages giving educational opportunities and building medical centers and recently this company they've invested somewhere around 16 million euros in india to for the empowerment of women That's not it. That's not it. They are also focusing towards a sustainable future, which is the point over here. And they have come up with a sustainable strategy for 2020. And some of their things that they have done till now for the sustainable strategy is 76% of their cotton comes from most sustainable sources. They have installed 700,000 solar panels, 224 wind turbines. energy efficient uh, and they have come up with energy efficient led lightings and 75% of all their sale 
In 2014 was LED lightings, apart from other lightings. So rest 25 was not sustainable, but 75% was. And after doing everything, they still stay. They still say on their website that they are warming up. I salute them if they are still warming up and uh, they can become hot in the near future. So I'll just move on and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll call upon Kushal, salesman of the year 2011, for the comparison of the two companies. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Kushal. And <laughs> right. <laughs> Please put it on to the next person so that they're not having to sort around with it. Okay. Alright, good evening everyone. My name is Kishel and I'm going to be um, comparing, um, doing a comparison of Mission Zero between Interface and IKEA. Um, so, just like um, Clifton said here, um, IKEA started really early on in the, in the 1900s, uh, but they only began to do their um, mission towards Mission Zero in 1994 um, when Ray Anderson was asked a question by one of the customers saying, um, what are you doing to contribute towards a clean and green environment? To which he did not have an answer to. Three years after that, he developed a team and basically worked towards Mission Zero. What they did was they um, implemented sky roof, um, skylight rooftops on factories, um, installed solar powers, and installed energy monitoring systems to know um, how much energy they're using. To date, four out of seven factories are basically using 100% renewable energy. The other three they're working on planned by 2030. Um, with solar um, and electricity throughout globally, they use 82% is basically renewable energy. And from the time they implemented um, or they decided to go towards Mission Zero, um, they only had 1% towards renewable energy. From 2008 till now, which was seven years, they drastically boosted the renewable energy to 45% of their global uh, Mission Zero target. Moving forward to IKEA, um, basically the approach with IKEA is a lot more different to the approach they had in Interface. Um, interface is more focused towards um, reducing their mission zero with um, their materials, for example, um, just minimizing. Basically, they're just minimizing energy or minimizing towards. Sorry, I lost my words there. Um, let me start again. So, with Interface, majority of the energy they use is basically consumable. With IKEA, they, what they do is they give back. Um, and they do this by having energy farms, um, energy plants and whatnot. In six different countries, um, they have introduced um, renewable energy farms. And that basically generates 27% of their um, energy towards their entire operations. With all their wastes that they use, including um, materials, um, wood, um, PVC, and any sort of glue they use towards making the final product, um, only 15% of that is actual waste. The rest is basically reused and recycled. And that's just what I said earlier, sorry. <laughs> so what I'll do now is hand it over to um, Josh, who will speak about the SWOT analysis. Okay, so the strength for QDF um, that the, it is a small organization and it is easy to manage. Um, they have customized services catering to customers who prefer specific designs, um, such as uh, preferred fabrics, le uh, leather, height, um, size, length, width, or whatever design that they want. 
uh, they have unique designs, which is um, done by Nicholas Holloway. He is the owner of uh, QDF. Um, Nicholas has 30 years experience in the furniture industry and QDF has been running for 13 years. Um, the company has had exposure um, through several magazines such as Trend, Home and Garden, The Essential Guide, and they are highly recommended by interior designers, um, architects and property developers, which is a bonus. Uh, we'll go on to the weaknesses. So um, it does not have a large number of employees or equipment um, to handle large orders. So they have to take um, small orders at a time. Um, they have a limited amount of employees. So this could be a weakness for them when um, a lot of them are sick or a lot of them are away on holiday. Um, this can slow down the process of getting their products out to their customers. Um, there's also a limitation on ideas for, oh, a limitation of um, ideas for new designs. So because Nicholas uh, Holloway is the only one who creates the designs, um, he could someday have a, a, a designer's blank and then he won't know what to do. So yeah, I will carry on with the opportunities. So because the organization is small, there's chance to um, implement Mission Zero into their company. Um, there's, so when it comes time to expanding the company, um, they are able to incorporate Mission Zero from the beginning of the commencement of the um, new expansion stores. Um, that way they don't have to introduce Mission Zero halfway um, through their new stores. Um, another opportunity is that they're able to hire skilled people with innovative ideas um, for expansion so they're able to um, meet their customers' needs even better. We'll go to the threats. Um, there are a large amount of competition in Auckland and re the Auckland region and New Zealand itself. Another threat could be new entrants of custom-made um, furniture stores, so other people who come up um, with stores such as QDF. Um, larger furniture companies attract more companies, so, uh, attract more customers. So those um, customers could go to larger companies and ask if they can get their designs altered over there. Um, other furniture companies have more designs to offer, um, as opposed to QDF. Um, I'll pass the time on over to the show. Okay, uh, after listening to the background of both the companies like uh, IKEA and Interface, and after knowing the sort of QDF, what all solutions that we as a people from UN can give to QDF to improve their wealth with green practices are these. First of all, as a part of weakness, QDF doesn't have much employers. So the first thing that QDF needs to do is to employ more people. And first to the department that they need to you know, open up is tracing department and the Rainforest Alliance. So I'll be explaining what tracing and Rainforest Alliance is. With the help of tracing department, what the customers can do is they can track from where their uh, product, the wood that has been used in the products came from the or origin, the species, so that the customer can feel comfortable from where is it coming. And for the Rainforest Alliance, it's actually a non-governmental organization that basically focuses on conserving the biodiversity. And with the uh, and IKEA ties up with the Rainforest Alliance to to you know uh, to to do the random checkup of the uh, wood samples so that uh, ethical practices are being practiced by the by their suppliers. So in case uh, QD, no, no, not in case QDF should. And QDF can, you know, tie up with the Rainforest Alliance to use this organization in the way that IKEA is being using. The second is, uh, IKEA has a lot of number of solar panels in their manufacturing site. So what QDF now can do is they can install few solar panels. The cost right now for the solar panels is uh, basically nine thousand dollars, and the most used solar panel is three thousand kilowatts. It's the starting range. So being a small uh, medium enterprise, instead of putting a huge amount of capital, they can install few solar panels at the beginning at their sites for the manufacturing site and whatever uh, money they have saved, they can put the same money 
for buying these solar panels the next year or the year following year. So that they don't need to put huge amount of capital in the one go, right? And also, they are using uh, the paper for the receipts, for the bills that they give to their customers for their suppliers. So instead of using that, they can use the electronic slips, like the PDF one, so that it can uh, reduce the usage of papers and in turn the trees could be saved. And the third thing is transporting. Uh, what the QDF can do for the transporting is they can dismantle their different parts from the manufacturing site and they can stack up all the things like the bases and the legs separately in their trucks so that most of the space of the trucks can be used and there are lesser number of you know, uh, transportation between their manufacturing site to their uh, backyard. Uh, next thing is they can store the waste furniture in the backyard. Uh, after, after a period of time like 5 years or 10 years, a furniture uh, gets damaged so instead of throwing that, uh, what the uh, what people can do, what customers can do, that they can call up their uh, you know QDF company, and QDF company will be giving the vouchers to those uh, people because they themselves cannot put the uh, that damaged furniture in the company. Rather, they can call up the company and they can say that we have uh, the furniture and it's on our driveway. You can come up and you can take the furniture because it's of no use to the customer right now. But QDF can take it and they can take that to their backyard and they can see if this can be reused. If the parts of that furniture can be reused. And if that can be reused, they can mend it, they can repair it and they can sell it again. And, and the last thing is, since it's a repair products, and there is a psyche in the mind of the customer that since it's a repair product, it might be not of a good quality. So while doing that, while repairing the, uh, you know, the products that has been damaged, the QDF needs to keep in mind that the quality of the products is not being compromised. Okay, so these are some of the solutions that we'll be uh, offering or we'll be suggesting QDF that they can use. Thank you. Now I'll be uh, transferring to Clifton. He'll be taking the next two parts, the last two parts of the presentation, the recommendation and the conclusion. Oh, the suspense is revealed. <laughs> yes, I was supposed to uh, talk about the recommendations. However, my <coughs> talented salesperson, Rishabh, has already spoken about it in solutions. So I'll go quickly on how and when to apply these recommendations. Uh, Rishabh has said a lot. So Rainforest Alliance certified. In order to be Rainforest Alliance certified, you'll have to register on their website and you'll be provided online training for different departments. And also what uh, QDF can do is they can source material from suppliers where the products are Rainforest Alliance certified. That means there'll be a logo on suppose this bench there will be a logo of uh, Rainforest Alliance that's like a frog, a uh, green frog. And uh, that is how you come to know that, yes, this particular product is Rainforest Alliance certified. Moving on, install solar panels in phases. Why in phases? Because obviously, it's a big investment for a small company. If you apply in phases, you can document the savings that you do and then move on. Don't completely phase out electricity. You can't you'll have to be dependent on electricity as well in New Zealand because there are times when it's only clouds. You can't see the sun uh, in New Zealand. Then transport dismantled product. We mean by this that if you transport ready-made products, it takes the space in a container. Rather than transporting a ready-made product, transport dismantled product like the tabletop, then the legs, you can dismantle it. So it, it's something innovative, but You'll have to think, think on it. This is just an idea. Reward for waste furnitures. Obviously, the customers won't just call you up and say, oh, I have a, a broken chair. Please take it away. And they are getting nothing out of it. They actually should be rewarded. At least something. This can be business-minded as well. You can reward a $10 voucher, a $20 voucher to shop with QDF within the next six months or 18 months. Yes, that is how you can also improve your business. That's it, but before ending our presentation, sorry, I'm a little, I'd like to say a few things that you, as QDF, would think 
that we are just a tiny little drop in a big ocean. But I would say, think of the fact that big ocean is not possible without that tiny drop. So it's high time that we as entrepreneurs, students, professor, and also as QDF, that's you, understand that there is more to wealth. And that's green. Thank you. Any questions, please? Uh, well, uh, what did you mean by warming up? Can you just clarify what you mean by warming, warming up. up? As in, they have a sustainable strategy, which is documented on their website. They have a whole big strategy. You can read the document. They have done a lot. But they just they have just mentioned that these are the things we have done till now. So this is IKEA or, or this, this is IKEA. Yeah. IKEA. We have done all these things that I've told. That's just a small list. There is a big list of things that they are doing. They are just and they after doing everything, they have mentioned over there. This is not the end. We are just warming up. As in there is something more to it. They have more innovative ideas. Yep. That's the reason. Thank you. Okay, uh, so uh, can you, uh, you've recommended to the company that, uh, uh, that you should install solar panels. Uh, can you elaborate more on it? I uh, mean to say that, is that uh, something which they should directly do or they should uh, think about something uh, else which is in their hand uh, immediately, like uh, reducing the consumption in the factories and the uh, company itself? Uh, so that they can first focus on that because this will take a lot of money and uh, the management uh, would always feel that uh, that will always be the second step. So uh, improving uh, the factory consumption first, uh, measuring what is being consumed. So uh, is that also which uh, something which you want to suggest before this or you want to go directly with? Oh yes. Thank you. You can join our team. <laughs> That's a good idea, because uh, yes, uh, you know, I was thinking, it's a one-time big investment. However, if they first look at their consumption in their factory on at their manufacturing site, that would be good. And yes, that's a good suggestion. Thank you for that. Uh, they can uh, carry on after that with the solar panels. Yeah, in your weakness, you have written limited ideas for new design. So I'm asking, you have not given any solution for that thing. How will you, if you have, you are, you are telling to open the new department, workforce department, that is Rainforest Alliance department. As a small company, it is very difficult for an organization to open a new department. So rather than opening a new department, don't you think so, they, could, they, should, they should focus on the limited ideas so that they can overcome that problem? You have not given any recommendation for, for that purpose. How can they give new ideas to the public? Um, I actually went on it with the, op with the opportunities so they could actually recruit um, new people to help innovate new ideas for the company. So it's not only Nicholas Hollower doing um, the designing for the company. So they are able to hire new people who are uh, highly skilled in that area. So, so that is for idea generation or what is it for? The hiring of new people? You so it's hiring new skilled people to help assist Nicholas Holloway to um, to create new designs for new customers because some customers may have this have an idea or Nicholas doesn't know how to produce the idea so if he hires new people they can have new skills new ideas so it's not they're not only depending on Nicholas just himself okay. so currently do you, you don't have anything you want to hire new people for that no that's an opportunity that they that the company could actually go on to so currently it's just a one person that's creating all the ideas. But then have you looked at the participation percentage of the employees? So if you have 50 employees and only 10% uh, participation. Yeah, uh, so it's only the employees that focus on the labor work. Yeah, so, that's what. So yeah. you, you could involve them too because they are the ones. Yeah, so that is another opportunity to involve um, the employees so to get ideas from them as so well. That, that should be Instead of hiring as well. So there's, that's another oh, okay. opportunity. So even a very large workforce with very little uh, uh, participation percentage from the employees uh, would make no sense. Uh, so you should first focus on the uh, in 
uh, improving the participation, yeah. of, uh, it should be 100%, and then go for uh, uh, yeah, cool. hiring you. Yeah, so that's another opportunity that the company could add. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Any more questions? In your strength, you said that you have unique designs. What is unique designs? Unique designs? Uh, I'll give you one example. We appreciate the fact that QDN is already doing its bit. Bit. It's good. They're using pine wood. They're using pine wood. Pine wood is uh, durable and elastic, and it's a long-lasting wood. They are good in doing that. So that's something like unique. So you don't have to actually color. It changes its colors, uh, colors automatically, pine wood. So they are good. We appreciate the fact that they are doing something good. They can get better by using our ideas, and they can get they can be best in the future if they adopt some more ideas. Have and I answered are, your question? No. No. We're so, talking about designs. Design, designs. I told you about the pine furniture, uh, pine pine wood that they're using at the moment. Have you? Uh, if you don't know about pine wood, I I recommend. Uh, you should to, have a, a picture or something. A picture of pine wood. Yes, uh, can you go on Google? Oh, but that would take time. Uh, yes, uh, we, will, <laughs> we will take that uh, feedback. Uh, we didn't have a picture. I agree to that. But uh, yes, sorry for that. But pine wood is something uh, which grows faster than hardwood. And it lasts longer. So that's the unique design. Sorry, we'll have the pictures next time. And you talk about electronic slips? Electronic receipts. Yeah, yep. yeah. and uh, some people don't use smartphones, and how are they going to you know, get the slip? I, that, yeah. Yeah. I think it's an era of smartphones. Each and every person, I think, in New Zealand at least have a smartphone. Even if you don't have a smartphone, still you, you get an email ID. So they can either transfer, either, either they can mail it to your email ID in the doc format or the PDF format. So I don't think you need to have a smartphone, but at least you will have an email ID so that it can be mailed. You get receipt quickly. I left it at home and uh, I bought the stuff, but uh, I don't have receipt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what's the solution for that? Uh, we'll keep in mind that the receipt is as soon as mailed to you, as soon as you get the product. So it will be keep, uh, kept in mind to you know be fast in giving you the receipt because we are not giving you a paper receipt for at least uh, for you know uh, giving away something you need to focus on something else if you are intro introducing it uh, a, a, a new thing a new thing if you are introducing a new thing you need to keep in mind that the thing is you know implemented it fast so you cannot uh, you cannot say you can you have to stay put if you are introducing a new new department or anything new so like you said that if your smartphone is somewhere else and you are saying that you didn't get the receipt but the company but the department that is responsible for giving away the receipt needs to keep in mind that the receipt is emailed to the person as soon as they uh, you know purchase the product all right thank you any questions thank you Positive feedback. The opening by Clifton was very impressive. I really like the opening, the way you opened the presentation and the way you described what you are, the purpose of your presentation. I really liked it. I, I was about to say the same thing. Uh, so yeah, excellent opening. The purpose was defined very uh, nicely. And uh, the recommendations too, you've uh, done a very good job in uh, recommending uh, very innovative things. So yeah, I liked it very much. Yeah, I'm going to say the same thing. This fantastic <laughs> opening pitch. And yeah, the structure is really clear. And you guys done a really good job and they did some research. It's really good. Uh, very well presented. Quite lively and good team effort by all of you guys. Good work. Yeah. Areas for improvement, you can start. Areas of improvement. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, in the part of comparison, I think you guys can do like two columns, like company A and company B. That's easier for the uh, audience to look at the comparison of the difference. Uh, I would also like to speak about the comparison uh, uh, slide, wherein uh, what happened was uh, you seem to be unsure of what you're saying. Uh, you were using things like I think, which shouldn't uh, be used. Uh, you should know for sure what you're presenting. 
Uh, plus, uh, you presented some facts which uh, I felt were incorrect, like facts on the renewable energy, uh, uh, because uh, Interface uh, has been uh, working a lot on re renewable energy. Uh, you could uh, just verify it. Uh, I did on uh, Google, and uh, the facts which were given about uh, so uh, they're using around 30% of their total uh, energy from renewable sources. And uh, IKEA is also doing a good job, but yeah, uh, Interface isn't far behind. But uh, the way you portrayed it, uh, you uh, meant as though Interface isn't doing anything. But yeah, 91% of the electricity is from the renewable uh, uh, sources, and 30% of the total energy from uh, yeah, uh, renewable sources again. So yeah. Yeah, I would like to focus on your weakness and your first weakness is the innovation in your slides. The content was very good uh, but the creativity, the innovation, the slides are looking very bland and look, they are not looking impressive. The content was very good but they are looking, they are not looking impressive while seeing that slide. And uh, one of your speakers, that is Kushal, when delivering the speech you are focusing more on Peter rather than the whole class or the judges. So that, uh, that is the main weakness I would like to point out. Focusing more on details, like while comparing the, the companies and providing it with more justification. Besides, yes, I agree with uh, him, like regarding the the focus. Yeah, push up. Thank you. Um, just, just be aware, this team and, and other teams, that that Mission Zero is a traded. It's a brand mark of of interface. Um, so when so you can say for a target company that they are drawing lessons from interfaces mission zero but you can't really say the company will adopt mission zero you need to count it in slightly different language um, there are other kind of trademark sustainability things like ISO something 12,000 or 13,000 um, and there's also something called natural step and there's a few other things. The Rainforest Alliance is, a, is another one of these branded uh, programs for sustainability. So just be aware of, of those things. Um, and again, avoid focusing on just one person. I did feel I was being looked at a, a lot. <laughs> spread, spread the love around. <laughs> um, yeah, and, and some more graphics. Uh, we mentioned it last week, so uh, some, some more graphics. Okay, um, I too, uh, we're back. Uh, any more areas for improvement? Uh, no. no. Good things now. Yeah, good things. All right. I think you did a great job of using the space. You, you used the lines. You used both sides of the screen. You, you kept out of there. So uh, top marks for, for using this space. You came out as well, which which worked extremely, uh, extremely well. Yeah, I really like the teamwork you have presented while doing your presentation. Uh, it was quite good. And the way you delivering the pitch of your voice was very audible. So, nice work. Okay. Uh, one recommendation which I really liked was uh, wherein you said uh, usage of uh, knockdown products, uh, wherein uh, you don't get the whole thing, you. Uh, disassemble it and those are knockdown products and uh, it is a very good way of utilizing the uh, the transport the truck uh, space and uh, excellent uh, you thought of that and suggested and uh, the, the purpose of the presentation and the way you motivated us to uh, really go for it uh, Clifton good job very well presented good team effort good teamwork all together and the, your very clear vision, beside the PPTs were quite understandable and quite clear. Yeah. I just wanted to say, I think the positioning at the very beginning, not the physical position, but really establishing who we were, the audience, and who you were, setting that role, that context, works worked very nicely. Um, and great eye contact from all of you, even if it was directed at me, but 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 good, good focus, <laughs> good eye contact uh, on the audience. Uh, you are clearly well rehearsed in terms of both your text and your body body language. And I think finally, um, but not last, 
you have really researched your target company, you really understand that target company, um, and you've come up with really practical, uh, specific things in terms of suggestions. So very well done there. Anybody else got any further positive comments to say? Jane? Um, I really enjoyed your performance tonight. I really liked the energy coming forward. Um, yeah, I thought it was great. So yeah, your energy was awesome, um, and it made me want to know more about your company. So yeah, well done. Thank you.